Numbers chapter 11. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord, and the Lord heard it, and his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burnt among them, and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. And the people cried unto Moses, and when Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire was quenched. And he called the name of the place Tiberah, because of the fire of the Lord burnt among them. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting, and the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? We remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all beside this manna before our eyes. And the manna was as coriander seed, and the color of it was the color of bdellium. And the people went about and gathered it, and ground it in mills, or beat it in a mortar, and baked it in pans, and made cakes of it. And the taste of it was as the taste of fresh oil. And when the dew fell upon the camp in the night, the manna fell upon it. Then Moses heard the people weep throughout their families, every man in the door of his tent, and the anger of the Lord was kindled greatly. Moses also was displeased. And Moses said unto the Lord, Wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servant? And wherefore have I not found favor in thy sight, that thou layest the burden of all this people upon me? Have I conceived all this people? Have I begotten them, that thou shouldst say unto me, Carry them in thy bosom, as a nursing father beareth the sucking child, unto the land which thou swearest unto their fathers? When should I have flesh to give unto this people? For they weep unto me, saying, Give us flesh that we may eat. I am not able to bear all this people alone, because it is too heavy for me. And if thou deal thus with me, kill me, I pray, out of hand, if I have found favor in thy sight, and let me not see my wretchedness. And the Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people, and officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with thee. And I will come down and talk with thee there, and I will take of the Spirit which is upon thee, and will put it upon them. And they shall burden, bear the burden of the people with thee, that thou bear it not thyself alone. And say thou unto the people, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow, and ye shall eat flesh. For ye have wept in the ears of the Lord, saying, Who shall give us flesh to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. Therefore the Lord will give you flesh, and ye shall eat. Ye shall not eat one day, nor two days, nor five days, neither ten days, nor twenty days, but even an whole month, until it come out of your nostrils, and it be loathsome unto you, because that ye have despised the Lord which is among you, and have wept before him, saying, Why came we forth out of Egypt? Moses said, The people among whom I am are six hundred thousand footmen, and thou hast said, I will give them flesh, that they may eat a whole month. Shall the flocks and the herds be slain for them to suffice them? Or shall all the fish of the sea be gathered together for them to suffice them? And the Lord said unto Moses, Is the Lord's hand waxed short? Thou shalt see now whether my word shall come to pass unto thee or not. And Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and gathered the seventy men of the elders of the people, and set them round about the tabernacle. And the Lord came down in a cloud, and spake unto him, and took of the Spirit that was upon him, and gave it unto the seventy elders. And it came to pass that when the Spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, and did not cease. But there remained two of the men in the camp. The name of the one was Eldad, and the name of the other was Medad. And the Spirit rested upon them, and they were of them that were written, but went not out unto the tabernacle. And they prophesied in the camp. And there ran a young man, and told Moses, and said, Eldad and Medad do prophesy in the camp. And Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men, answered and said, My Lord Moses, forbid them. And Moses said unto him, Envious thou for my sake? Would God that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. And Moses got him into the camp, he and the elders of Israel. And there went forth a wind from the Lord, and brought quails from the sea, and let them fall by the camp, as it were a day's journey on this side, and as it were a day's journey on the other side, round about the camp, and as it were two cubits high upon the face of the earth. And the people stood up all that day, and all that night, and all the next day, and they gathered the quails. He that gathered least gathered ten homers, and they spread them all abroad for themselves round about the camp. 
And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, ere it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people. And the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. And he called the name of the place Kibroth, Kibrothat Ava, because there they buried the people that lusted. And the people journeyed from Kibrothat Ava unto Hazaroth and abode at Hazaroth. I love this chapter for the things that we can learn in it. We see Moses as a human being here, overburdened, got half a million to two million people he's trying to lead. Uh, most of them appear to be complainers. We, we learn a little later in the, in the chapter. And he's talking to God, where, you know, what did I ever do to you? <laughs> you know, that you want me to, to look after all these people? This is too much for me to bear. And we see God perfectly willing to accept his prophet's complaint, righteous complaint, I might put righteous complaint here, and says, okay, great, call 70 men from the various tribes. Now please note, this is 70 individuals. It didn't say they were the judges from before. It didn't say there was two, you know, some six from each of the tribes. Just 70 individuals. Bring them to the tabernacle, and I will share some of the spirit you have with them, and then they can be helpful to you. And that's what he does. Now, 68 of the 70 show up. Not all of them do. Two of them are still in the camp. But Heavenly Father recognizes that these two are righteous individuals and gives them the same spirit of prophecy that uh, the 68 that show up at the tabernacle have. And you need to understand, this is, doesn't mean that these people get to replace Moses or that they're as much prophets as Moses. It just means that in the job that they have, they have the opportunity to be inspired uh, in their lesser sphere as Moses' helpers than, uh, and, and not to replace him. So there's that. But a young man runs and tells Moses that El Eldab, I think, and Medad, the name of the two that are in the camp, and they're prophesying. And Joshua says, my Lord, forbid them. And Moses shows the true greatness of leadership. He said, would to God all of Israel were prophets. He was not threatened because there were people that were able to do some of what he did, as so many leaders are. How many times do we have somebody in our family who's better at something than we are, and we don't want them to do it because we're afraid it'll show us up? Sometimes our wives are much better at certain things than we are. But very often, they at least have talents that complement ours and are better than us in so many ways, and we don't want to do it because we're the great high mucky muck male and we're supposed to be the great grand poobah and, and be the boss and all the rest of this stuff. A hooey. That's garbage. You know, Heavenly Father didn't care whether these guys were um, the leaders of the clans, leaders of the tribes. They were 70 righteous men and he was going to support and sustain them in helping Moses. Then we have another incident. And I love this one because it shows something. The people complain. They got manna. Heavenly Father is sustaining these people 24 hours a day. He's going before them in a pillar of cloud and, and leading them all the rest. He's feeding them and all the rest of this. I mean, there just about isn't anything except wiping their noses that he isn't doing. And they complain. We want to eat flesh. We ate cucumbers and melons in Egypt. Why did we leave? We had the fish, etc., etc. And they complain, and Moses goes to God, and he says, they're complaining again, and, and God says to Moses, you watch, and I'll, we'll, we'll look after these people. And so the next day, quails come, and they land all around the camp, three feet deep, and these people become gluttonous. They're going to eat it for a month, it says. They become gluttonous, and the smallest amount that anybody gets is 10 homers. A homer is the equivalent of 10 bushels. Ten, a bushel of potatoes, a bushel of wheat would weigh maybe 50 to 60 pounds. These, there was no way these people could have eaten all of that. It was pure gluttony. And it says, when they put it in their mouth, before they even chewed it, the Lord struck them with a plague, and they died, and they called that place where they buried all these people who were the gluttons, the graves of lust. That was the name I couldn't get out. The graves of lust. We don't want to have that in our own lives because we lust after stuff and that becomes the cause of our death. Happens sometimes. <laughs>